Today, Binance's BNB token turns positive in the days after the SEC hit the company with 13 charges. Binance lawyers claim SEC Chair Gary Gensler previously offered to serve as an advisor to the firm, and a research analyst at Nonsen breaks down on-chain data she examined following the SEC charges against Binance and Coinbase. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Jordan Smith. Crypto prices in the green today. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded close to the $27,000 level, Ether traded around $1,850, and Binance's BNB token rose 2.5% even amid the aftermath of the lawsuit against the crypto exchange by the SEC. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. Binance lawyers claim SEC Chair Gary Gensler offered to serve as an advisor to the crypto exchange in 2019 when he was teaching at Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Sloan School of Management. That's according to a filing from Binance's lawyers from yesterday, which claimed that Gensler was trying to cozy up to Binance before he started going after the firm. Earlier this week, the SEC filed 13 charges against Binance and its founder, Shengpeng Zhao. The SEC alleges that the company failed to register as an exchange and broker-dealer, improperly commingled funds, and lacked critical internal controls over its businesses. Gensler was appointed to the head of the SEC in 2021 by President Biden, and over the past year has come down hard on the crypto industry. Next, the U.S. is challenging bankrupt crypto exchange Bittrex's plans to repay customers. In a new filing in Delaware Bankruptcy Court, the U.S. said that Bittrex still owed a large portion of the $50 million fine handed down by U.S. regulators over sanctions violations. The U.S. argues that the company's bankruptcy plan prioritizes repaying customers over paying its fines rather than treating each equally. Bittrex filed for bankruptcy back on May 8th, shortly after the SEC accused it of operating an unregistered securities exchange, and the company decided to wind down operations in the U.S. Last, we have an update to tell you about regarding the atomic wallet hack from earlier this week. In a blog post, blockchain intelligence firm Elliptic said their analysis suggests the infamous North Korean hacking group Lazarus is responsible for the hack. At least $35 million has reportedly been compromised. Atomic Wallet acknowledged reports of the hack over the weekend, writing that the situation was being investigated and later tweeted that less than 1% of users had been affected. Elliptic wrote in the post that they attribute the hack to Lazarus with a high level of confidence, citing several factors, including the observation that the stolen assets are being laundered using specific services which have also been used to launder proceeds of past hacks perpetrated by the Lazarus Group. Elliptic noted that the atomic wallet hack would mark the first major crypto heist publicly attributed to Lazarus since the $100 million exploit of the Horizon Bridge last June. All right, let's turn back to the lawsuits against Binance and Coinbase for our main story. Nonsense research analyst Arali Bakhtar examined on-chain data following the announcements and spoke with Crypto World's Talia Kaplan today about her findings. So there have been a lot of big headlines in crypto this week. So I want to start off by focusing on the on-chain movement you observed since the SEC charged Binance and Coinbase. Let's start off by examining the data immediately after it was announced that the SEC filed 13 charges against Binance and the company's founder, Xinping Zhao, on Monday. What were net outflows from Binance and its U.S. arm in the first 24 hours after that news broke? So as you mentioned, the charges happened on Monday, uh, 5th of June for Europe. It was 5 p.m. to 5 p.m. around 5 p.m. CT. And the immediate reaction was really, uh, obviously, net outflows from, from Binance. Um, from Binance US, what was interesting is that we have we what we tracked was marginally net inflows. So in the first 24 hours after the 5th of June, so from the 5th of June to the 6th of June, roughly 5 p.m. CET, uh, we had um, from Binance um, roughly 1.4 billion uh, of outflows, and from Binance US, uh, very little inflows, so uh, negligible inflows. Uh, net, I'm talking net, of course. So what do you think this means for Binance and really the industry as a whole? Yeah, so what's interesting if we maybe jump to the next uh, couple of days after that is that um, outflows have continued. So the second day, uh, we had 300 million roughly outflows from Binance and then the third day, 350 million. And then what was interesting is that um, sometime in, I think it was on the 6th of June, um, there was an announcement around uh, Binance US um, assets being frozen to, to remain basically in the US. And then we started to see small outflows also from Binance US. So the big picture is that maybe a knee-jerk reaction just after the first announcement uh, of, of charges. 
on Monday, um, and then ongoing outflows from Binance, and then small outflows starting from Binance US. So um, what that tells me, basically, if, if I look also at the at the really uh, kind of a bigger, larger look back period, so from uh, December, is that um, this is a little bit of an outlier. So it's like um, the second largest net outflows a year to date. Um, the first uh, largest occurred sometimes in, in January, where you remember we had also um, some uh, regulatory news flow around, around that time. So this is definitely um, kind of a major reaction, but it's um, it's in a momentum that has been negative. So we've had, we have seen net outflows since FTX uh, out of Binance. Um, and then we had really uh, days where those net outflows were extreme, uh, one of them being January, as mentioned, and the second one being um, um, on Monday this week. So if we observe this momentum of net outflows and we keep in mind that that might be a very long process, I think what we're going to see is really, really um, over time ongoing ongoing net outflows uh, out of Binance. Turning to Coinbase, what happened in the 24-hour period after the SEC sued that crypto exchange. What did you notice? Yeah, you know, it was really interesting because we were focused on, on Binance. Uh, and then, of course, all of a sudden, with crypto, uh, like, it never gets boring. So Coinbase um, was announced. And what we saw is that after the, the Binance, Binance announcement, we started to, saw out, to see outflow from net outflows from Coinbase as, as well. Um, but they were not as uh, important. I think when we're looking just before the announcement around Coinbase was 300 million um, net outflows, and then it's accelerated and it came close to to kind of the first days of net outflow for Binance. So it was for Coinbase, it was uh, minus 1.3 billion um, at the at the worst point. So just after the the announcement. Uh, but what was interesting for me is that. Well, we mentioned earlier that the, the outflows have continued for Binance in the next uh, two days and on the second day, the third day. But for Coinbase, actually, the net outflow were um, uh, much less important. So the first day was 1.3 billion, as we mentioned. And then the second day, um, minus 70 million or something. And then the latest data that I looked at before uh, this call was slightly positive um, in flow. So yeah, what was interesting to me was the lesser reaction um, for, or the lesser net inflows um, after a while for Coinbase. I'm curious to know, what is your outlook? Do you think we will see more of the movement we have been seeing over the past few days? What is on-chain data signaling to you as the SEC is sending a clear message that the agency is continuing to crack down on crypto exchanges? Yeah, you know, it's what is telling me, so we can look at the mix of data, one area being on-chain, another area being off-chain, you know, just prices and volume, trading volume. Um, so one thing that's really, really um, is clear is that uh, the, the net outflow started um, in November 2022, just after FTX, and right. haven't really uh, stopped since then. So in a sense, um, my guess is that there has been an adjustment that has been ongoing in terms of um, leaving in terms of leaving your asset on those exchanges, using these exchanges. Um, yeah, so that's an adjustment that has been ongoing and that will probably be continuing. So I would expect ongoing ongoing net outflows. And uh, if you look at other data points, like for example, um, just very simply price, we have had a lot of bad news since FTX. Um, but if you look at just Bitcoin, the low in the price was um, in last year in, in November 2022, and since then we have had um, we have had macro bad news, we have had uh, regulatory bad news. But what really surprises me is um, is like the lesser reaction to bad news, both on the flow on the on chain um, data and also on other types of data like price or trading volume, for example. So I think it's just a very, very slow adjustment to this new to this new environment. All right, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.